Hello, my name is Thomas Ngarajola. I'm the head instructor for Shallon Self-Defense Centers. Today I'd like to welcome you to our Orange Belt instructional video. This is in a series, so each tape builds upon each. There might be things I say in this tape that I already said in the previous tapes. It's better to have overlaps than gaps. Let's get started. The first thing in each of the videos is the stances. The cat stance is a technically a new stance I like to go over in the Orange Belt. What we're going to be doing from here is so you can see from the side here your back foot is this way and your front foot is this way lead hand approximately over the lead foot rear hand approximately in line with the rear foot there's a 90 degree angle between your feet as if your feet were together you go one foot out on the ball of your foot and there's your cat stance this would be considered a right cat stance this would be considered a left cat stance some people call this a yang cat stance when you're very square and if your knee is in a little bit and your back foot is tilted a degree or two, a yin cat stance. Either way, you'll find there's different times you might be more square and more covered. This is good because it cuts off access to your groin a little bit this way. So these are your cat stances. In our system, we use the cat stance many times as a transition, not as an actual stance as a fighting position. Jim, come on out. Okay, what we're going to be doing in a minute, we're going to be doing some X blocks with Jim. An X block or crossing hand, you got from right foot out of the elbows, you're going to be coming in downwards or upwards. And you could be doing it with a cat if he was to throw a kicking motion, coming back, or if he was to come down up in a hand motion, this way. Your right hand could be on top or your left hand. It's the exact same thing as right foot out of elbows. He comes in, right there. Nice strong. If he pushes down, I'm in a good base. Push. No, just push down. I'm, I'm in a good base here. If I was in a bad posture, I would have it bad. So from here, come on now, over. Boom. He comes in with that hand. Same thing. Doesn't matter. You can do right or left here because you'll be setting up later if one hand was one way or the other into arm bars. So the crossing fist, you can do with your half mooning. Up, down, and back. Another block I like to work on is the downward palm or dropping palm. What you're going to be doing is taking the edge of your hand, not the fingers, the edge of your hand and coming downwards. If Jim was to throw a punch motion, you'd be coming downwards. Now sometimes in class, your instructor might have you practicing it from a horse stand just to work on the dropping of the shoulder. But you really wouldn't use it that way because if he was to kick at me slowly, it's really not that effective. The dropping palm works in coordination with your body motion and sometimes you can go off slightly one angle or the other to work a little bit more of a deflection. So the dropping palm, here. Let's do it from the other side so you can see it. He comes in with something and down. It's a retreating motion. There's that cat stance from before. So you can come back with something. So the dropping palm in the air, like this. You can also use it up the lead hand that way. That's the dropping palm. From the white belt video, we had a lot of the basic blocks. Let's go through gym with together the eight point blocking system. Ready? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can do them consecutively. One and two together. Three and four together. Five and six together. Seven and eight together. You can change your stances up. Let's do seven and eight together. Five and six together. Three and four together. One and two together. Let's switch feet. You can do it with your hands open. One and two. Three and four, five and six, seven and eight. You can see how I'm adding motion to it. You can do all half mooning with them, can right together. You could also do them together, but separate, different blocks, as if a like this way, a high block and a low block. As if Jim was coming to grab me with this hand high and this hand low, going to grab me, trying to toss me as he comes in this way. You could also do it from those. When you get three pinion later, you'll see it. Where he, this hand can be high, you'll be blocking this way, and this hand can be going this way. So you should also try them sometimes going in together but different directions. It really helps your, your brain, with both hemispheres of your brain, work in your movements. Another way you can be doing them is one, two, real fast, way after each other. He throws that hand and this hand. See, he went one and two. Or same hand here, going one and two. Of the same hand, one and two, 
or he throws that hand going in and in, doing them together and separate. Thank you, Jim. Either way that you do that, it is fine. Doesn't matter. You might prefer doing it like this, but I want you doing it both, both ways. Another thing that we worked on before in the white and yellow belt videos was the eight point blocking with the fish strikes. Now I'll do the eight point blocking with open strikes. Then we'll have Jim come out and I can show it on you. One, spear hand poke. Two, three, chop. Four, chop. Five, rake. Six, rake. Seven, chicken wrist. Eight, chicken wrist. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When you're working in the air, you do not have to go extremely hard with your strikes. Save that when you're working with the person in the bag. Also, a person is always control. Jim, come on out. Okay. Just so you can see it in the body, just turn a little bit here, get on guard. Throws that hand, you block, and you do a spear hand. When you hand this way, we'll be talking about in a minute, it's called the earth spear hand. And this one, here. Two. Those are the cross chops. You have one, and the other block. You have the crossing motion, crossing motion. Number five, grabbing it, maybe throwing his shoulder, raking across. It's a setup for other things. This one here, six, throwing and coming across. You might be doing other things. So you have one. Okay, now that's to be two. It doesn't make a difference how you do them, whether you do in or out. And also, if I block here and come in here, I also could have been here and struck in here and it went to arm bars. So there is no exact rule that you have to block a right punch with a one or a right punch with number two. It can work either way. In fact, to give you a better angle, let's do it from the other side. Jim throws his left hand, I block. The spear hand could be going other way, but right now let's keep it just going to the throat. It's a simple area. Two, three, I come in with a chopping motion. I could be pressing his hand, that could be it. Or it could be chopping or setting up. Four, same thing here. Five, it could be coming in and across and kicking out his leg. Number six, coming in, trying to give you the back angle so you can see how it works. See how his shoulder comes round and through. Seven, could be a kicking motion. Coming up back here. Once again, see how he's on the outside? If he threw his, that foot there, I could be on the inside. And number eight block, in here. The chicken wrist can be going in lots of different directions. Let's do it once together. Ready? One, spear hand. Two, spear hand. Three, chop. Four, chop. Five, rake. Six, rake. Seven, chicken wrist. Eight, chicken wrist. Something else you might want to try is doing number one block and do the left spear hand. Number two block, do the right. Number three block, come in with the chop. Four, come in with the chop across. Five, watch this, this is gonna seem weird. You come in with your rake this way. Six, come up with your rake this way. Seven, come up with your chicken wrist. And eight, come up with your chicken wrist. Basically, it's just reverse. One, poke. Two, poke. Three, chopping. Four, chopping. The five might have seemed weird to you, but you actually do it often. You rake in here, possibly to get ready for a knee strike. Six, boom. I'm not adding a lot of fancy moves each time. I'm not trying to impress you right now. I'm just trying to teach you the foundation. The fancy moves, all the advanced stuff will come later. Block, chicken wrist. And he comes in again. Block, chicken wrist. Thank you, Jim. Practice the blocks, go slowly. Whether you're doing the reverse counter or the open counter, you might prefer one over the other, practice both. As I said before, it's good to work how the hands flow with each other. Sometimes it's good to learn how to strike exactly from where your hand is. That's a strong attribute of Kempo. Practice well. to work on the basic hand strikes, 
and kicking techniques as required in the orange belt. Let's have Jim come on out. What you're going to see is a lot of repeat from the last segment. Our tape works in unity. We talked about the spear hand before. The spear hand, edges of the frontal fingers going into the throat. When your palm is facing the earth, it's called an earth. If your palm is facing upwards, it's called a heaven. People always say to me, which is the best one to do? Well, a lot of times when you're in close, this works well. And you can be on a slight angle. If he's a little further away, you need a little more shoulder rotation, that works good. Especially if he's like down on the floor. This works good, but that tends to work a little bit better. You'll get a feeling for it. And that's why you should walk around with your partner and just, just move around so you can feel the distance. Plus he's learning by seeing how I'm delivering the different strikes and without even blocking it. Seeing how I'm moving, getting used to what I can do from what distances. So the spear hand, we have officially, just turn with this flip forward so they can see. Earth and heaven. It's more of a probing, it comes from the snake. The next one is the chicken wrist, as I demonstrated before. Hold your hand like this, watch it. The part does not bend is the area we're striking with. You'll be coming up underneath the chin, side of the jaw, to the filtrum area, coming backwards, or whipping into the jaw this way, sometimes even to the neck. It doesn't really matter which side, which way you use it. You might have a preference after a while, but keep it open depending on how he's moving up to the temples. You can be doing them together. So that's the chicken wrist. It's do from the other side. You, you block, boom, and it whips. You see, he punches, kicks, whatever, boom, whoa, right in, right in. At first, you might not think, as I thought, it's a good, strong strike. You could actually do a lot of damage to chicken wrist because it's a whipping motion with your power and relaxes. I don't have a problem, I don't want a problem, wham, and right in. That's the chicken wrist. Notice it all ties in with the motions of the eight-point blocking. Next is the cross chop, coming right in to the neck, the carotid arteries, or in karate we call them the karate arteries. <laughs> An old karate joke. Right in like this. Come across your center, just a hair, or just up to your center. No need to come all the way over here. And in, and in, in, and in. It's just not your arm. You gotta get your arm and your body. You wouldn't hit anybody right there. Maybe go lower. I'm just showing you so we have something to aim at. Jim will tell you the difference. Arm, arm and body. The cross rake was the other one from the five and six. You could be here, grabbing his arm, and just coming across as a setup for something else. So the cross tiger rake is this way, is this way. You could be behind him, coming in. Many times the setup for holes. Or it could be an actual strike to see what you're doing. So once again, spear hand, heaven, earth, you have your chicken wrist, you have your chops, cross chops, and you have your cross rate. Very good exercise on a bag in the air, practice on boards. When you do the cross tiger rake, it's this part right here that hits. Then the fingers come in. It's not the fingers, then this. It's that way. The next I'd like to work on is the roundhouse kick. What I'd like you to do right now is not to watch the foot I'm kicking with. Watch the foot that's on the ground. It turns. Full complete. It turns. If you turn just a little bit, that's all right. But traditionally it's taught with a full complete turn. You can cross out that way or you can come back. In the air, you might find it hard to come back if you're not hitting anything. This is called the roundhouse instep when you're this way. When you pull your toes back and you watch your stomach and hit the ball, that's called the roundhouse ball. So if Jim brings his foot up, when he hits me this way, it's roundhouse instep. If he pulls the ball back, exposes the toes, that's the roundhouse ball. The roundhouse instep can work quite well, but if I block it like this, I still blocked it. If he did a roundhouse ball kick, it could have snuck in and still hit me in the stomach. Very penetrating. That falls into the snake category. Let's do it from the other side right here. Watch that bottom foot. It turns. Targets, knee, 
You can do the roundhouse ball to the groin, the roundhouse into the stomach. It's really only limited by your flexibility. You do not have to kick high. You want to kick him in the head? Sweep him first, then kick him. Over time, it is good to work higher, because if you can kick high, we'll think about what you can do if you were lower. In fact, now that he's lower, let's trip him with the roundhouse. He's down on the floor. Let's do, turn this way, Jim, sideways. The stomp kick. There's two types of stomp kick. One with your whole foot, we call it the sole part, and one with the heel. The heel is a great striking mechanism for the solar plex once your opponent's down. So he comes up, and we're fighting, right? We're hitting each other, and I sweep my opponent, and I turn, and I do my stomp kick. Don't be confused with an ax kick that comes around. The stomp kick is right in. So you can see from here, just right in, solar plex, groin. Very dangerous, and you have to control your movements his motions to the head. If he's on his back, uh, he's on his uh, stomach from here, you can come in to areas in the back. But watch, it's this leg down here that bends too, getting the work in. Another one is called the one of the sole. We use a lot of times when we're pinning things, like the whole foot coming in this way, coming into the head region. You gotta watch it, you can really hurt his neck, you can bounce him off the ground in this way or in this way. We're just checking for a quick second. So you have the sole and you have the heel. Both are good. You should work on maybe doing a little board breaking with your instructor in that way and putting a bag, come on up Jim. Thank you. Putting a bag on the floor and working them. Remember, it's the whole weight. Even with the rhino stick, it's how your weight moves. But not just kicking with your limb, kicking with your entire body. Practice well. Next I'd like to work on is called the running roll. In the yellow belt video we did the walking roll, and in the white belt video we did the forward roll. The running roll is different. You might have gotten into it already, but your inertia is moving much quicker, your momentum. So you gotta be very careful. You gotta exhale and be very safe. You could be running away from somebody to come up behind you and push you. You could be running towards something that is running and you fall. So the walking forward roll was yellow, now we're gonna be running. Get a couple quick steps moving and go. Now what's very important to watch out for is that your feet don't come over. I'll do this once for you. From here, watch my feet how they hit the mat very hard. I'm going and then ugh, and my feet hit very hard. You have to watch out for that. So as you're rolling, you can roll when you're moving very quickly. Now the walking was the walking. Try to get yourself moving a little bit and boom, right in. I'm holding my hand here, so you can see you only really need one hand. You could be holding something, doing whatever else. Since we have the mat out from the uh, running rolls, let's get uh, the next section down, which is the sweeps and takedowns. Thank you, Jim. From here, the backward sweeping pull concept from the orange belt really means for some reason you're fighting somebody and you get behind them and you're going to basically just be yanking them so that their shoulders get over past the heels and they fall down. That's strictly just force. I'm fighting with them, I knee them, I get behind them and I yank this shoulder over the hip that way. A, a different way to do it, come over here Jim, so you can maybe we'll try to land you on the mat is he's throwing a spinning back fist or a spinning back kick and I yank and I pull him down. Watch it again, move this way a little bit and down. That actually comes from the monkey, that's another way to do it. An interesting way to pull it off too is you're fighting with somebody, you knee them, you get behind them and you're hitting them and you get into this position for some reason. A lot of people go for the side headlock. What we're going to do right here is just brace the left foot against the back, yank, and sit down, and then you just turn his head to the side, and you're in position. Let's watch that again. Let's do it right from over here. Fighting with the guy. I get my foot behind, bracing, 
I'm yanking back. I turn him to the side. Get in the mount position, always turn the head to the side. There's lots of things you can be doing from here. Grabbing the alarms, coming in. We're gonna be getting into those. I don't want to get into them right now. I want to get you more getting the guy down to the floor. So from here, you can just yank him. Maybe he threw a back fist at you and you got him in position and he was off balance and you just yanked him. Or he was a little stronger, you got your foot back here and you just pulled him off and got him in position. Or you could be running. Or you can do it where he's throwing that strike and he's spinning. Right there. See how I adapted to work? I thought Jim was going to be spinning. Jim thought he was scared, but I slipped. I'm in here. Now, what do you think? What do you think I'm going to do now? What I'm going to do is hook, put that foot there, yank, and go. Always working. Let's fix my little thing here. You've been here before. You adapt and go. Now, let's say he's doing the spinning back fist. You yank. And there you go. Working the sweeps and takedowns are great because they get you down to the floor. Let's go into the next section, which is the Rendori, which is the grappling. I know all you're probably going to want to do from here, you might have experimented from here already. In the earlier videos, we did kicks from this position. We did hand strikes and kicks from this position. Maybe even from this position where you're on both knees and you, boom, you kick. You're on both knees, wham, you kick. You're on one knee, boom, you kick. In here, white belt was all about slapping out and rolling and maneuvering. On the past video, we went on two knees. We were doing a little bit, same drill. We're gonna be now on one knee. You might say, what's the difference? The difference is you're up a little higher. Your nurse is gonna be moving. All the techniques from the past one, maybe pulling this arm down, all these work. So in case you didn't have that opportunity to see that, pull this into here. Yank here and move the knee. You get a lot more motion going because the one knee is up without easier motion of the hips. Now he can put up either foot. Usually, what I was taught by my instructor, Mr. Mishu, was high rank puts either leg up first and the lower rank gets to pick what foot they want to put up. There is advantages to putting up either foot. I don't know what Jim's really going to do. So he puts up that one. I might, as soon as the instructor says go, I might want to quickly switch and try to maneuver around and go. There's all different techniques to it. It doesn't really matter. The main thing here, I can show you 100 techniques, is to get the feeling. If you have to go onto two knees for a split second, great. Go up to the other knee, working around, possibly driving him back. When you go on that one knee, you get a lot more inertia for your movements. Don't try to muscle him. Me and Jim is going to fight each other. You know, Jim's a little bigger, he might just win. What I need to do and don't be doing kicks yet and stuff like that. That comes later in the Kempo version. Pull, now watch, I'm on the one knee. You can move around a lot better than the two knees. See, I quickly shifted and went from one knee up to the other. And then go. Don't worry about massive finishing moves right now. They'll come. As you get going, you can be turning him, flipping him, coming up around, locking. There's so many versions of locking of the legs. We'll get into them as you get rolling. But that's the grapple you endure. You're here with one knee up, and the same thing. I'm over here. Jim starts to somehow throw me that way. I can do the same technique as bringing him over as I talked about in the other one. Always keeping your head down, trying to keep your fingers out of the way, try to get your head to the side. Always dispersing your weight. Don't have your weight back here, try to have your weight on him. Okay? Now come over here, Jim. Something I'll be getting into. Look my little thing again here. Hope you heard me. Lie down flat. Once you got the person here, it's basically going to be over. You could be striking him, locking him. The instructor will be saying stop. Some things you could be doing, and we'll get into this later, but is using your elbow in here, your elbow in here, your elbow in here. So go on top of Jim like this. It doesn't feel that bad. Or like this, you can hear Jim there, it feels a lot different, especially if you're moving around a lot. Okay. Thank you, Jim. The grappling is not more important, it's not less important. The blocking is not more important, it's not less important. Everything that we teach you is important. 
If it wasn't important, we wouldn't be teaching it to you. Practice well. I'd like to uh, introduce to you the Kempo techniques as required in the orange belt section of our system. Jim? Okay, the first one is called the double striker. Let's do it from this section so you can see it a little bit better. Now, remember we talked about before, the punch coming in is just a punch. It's not ultimate reality, just learning how to fundamentally get our body in the right place. I could be doing it against this hand, I could be doing it against a kick, he could be spinning back fisting, I could be doing it there, I could be doing it from a more grapple oriented position. But we just do it against a punch to get that common denominator concept in. He strikes in, block, and you hit very hard. Watch my body, I come in and boom. That'll be getting a little twist, hitting the collarbone. Rake his face, getting his head to come down, grabbing of the arm, twisting of the arm. Put corkscrewing it down and pulling it towards me. Snap it. You can hold on if you want. Back fist and a side kick. Again, the double strike up. Boom. See the double? Two moves, double. Down and up, double and double. The names are designed to try to help you. Let's do it lefty so you can get a different view. In. Rake. Pull. Bring it towards your center. Snap and out. You might prefer to use this against kicks. A friend of yours in the dojo might prefer to do it against a club technique. That's up to you. That's a double striker. Let's do it once in the air, Jim. Ready? And in. Rake and pull knee. And finish. Okay, the next one is the driving chops. You got a cross block. His body's still coming in. It's a hammer strike right there to his ribs. His body comes down, hitting it up underneath or raking. I cock back a little bit into that cat momentarily, and then I drive my chops out. Again, block, shot. His body comes down, hitting up, raking, and in. I could be, when he punches, see how I hit his face? I could be doing that, then coming in. If his body's not moving, I could whip back more with the power. Whatever, that, that's the application part of it. Right now, we're trying to get the technique down. He throws his left hand, he could be blocking, coming in, resetting everything up, and driving out. You can even change these shots to different things, but nice and simply, just right there. Make sure you're hitting not here and up, but in this region right here. Stoot in the air once, driving chop. Number three block. Come in, notice the other hand is on guard. Coming up, retreating back a little bit, and whew. You notice Jim's foot and my foot, the back foot, follow. We didn't get extended like this, we came in. When you strike like that, and you come in, like that, let's do it together, Jim, in. That's called the tiger drag. That enables greater offensive mobility because your body is not extended. Thank you, Jim. The Kempo techniques I taught first, I'm going to teach the combinations. The order is not saying which one's more important. So in a moment we'll be doing the combinations. Let's get started with the combinations required in the orange belt section of our Shaolin Kempo Karate system. Jim? Combination number four, we'll do from both directions. As the attack comes in, you step back, down, and away, and a high block up, letting his energy come up and over. Convert that energy, throw it into a circle. His head will follow his shoulder. Tiger rake, cross tiger rake, everything comes together. Roundhouse kick, instep or ball coming back the other way. So what's going to be happening is when Jim comes in, his head's moving in this direction. His body continues, his head gets uplifted, turned, raked, kick. And there's going to be the takedown. So let's go through it slow. He comes in, come across, throw it. And that's kind of vicious. 
as you get going and get going. Make sure you don't do it too hard to each other in the dojo. Your body's cocked, hit back, his head's coming down. As his head comes down, whoom, back up. He falls. Do not full contact your partner. This cross stance is merely just a stance to catch your balance. Boom, you're there for one second. There's the stomping motion from before. As you stomp on his groin or in his thigh, his head could come up. If his head comes up, just kick it down with the bottom of your foot. Land over him. Many, many years ago, it was taught to me as a landing on the chest. Very dangerous. Just land over him. To the eyes. And then to the temples is the more advanced way to do it. And you start to be giving you those hand strikes. For right now, just two front to knuckle punches. Wham, wham. And notice as my weight comes down. And I'm not leaning over him like this. Coming down. Light kick to the face. Another kick to the face. Look around. Let's do it from the other side. He punches in. I give. See, Jim had to readjust because I wasn't really there. I didn't block hard like this. Where I went, Ugh. that tells him I'm there. So he comes in. And throw. Boom. And just watch how you fall on this. Some debris right over there. Stomp. I'm offline a little bit right now. That's fine. Kick him anyway. In Kempo, you go with the flow. Punch, punch. Boom, wham. If I was doing it with my left kick, I would come with left, right, and turn. It's not, come on, Jim. It's not a sin if you went wrong in the wrong direction. Let's do combination four in the air. Punch is coming in. Step back. Notice his hand position. You'll see it later. Come around. Wait, look at the waist. Boom. Kick. Wham. Stomp. Jump. Boom. Jim did the two punches. I did the poking techniques. That will come later. We don't want you to injure anybody's eyes in class as you're learning how to control your weight as it comes down. Then the kick. This is an intense kick. Wham. And then over. And there we go. That is combination four. Combination number five. Three block, elbow here, fist here. Kind of do an upside down three block, what we call a wing block, where your elbow is going to be here and your hand is going to be here and you're coming up this way. This is designed when you get caught, and maybe it's, you've probably done it by this time, hitting your jaw, where you got caught and you tried to block and you got hit here, where you went to here and you got hit in the shoulder. This is that in between block, when you get caught in between. Come in slow so they can see it from here. And you're turning your body, and your other hand is up near your face. Now, very easily, if you throw a high kick up here, Jim, I can be doing it against a high kick. I can be doing it against this back fist. There you go, doesn't make a difference. I throw it again, that's the beauty. I'm letting anything go here. I thought Jim was gonna do a back fist, he did a spinning back fist, but see, the techniques still work, it doesn't make a difference. And then you just go right into the rest of the movement. So, the initial block, let's just do it in the air for them, Jim, is coming up. Protecting in this region, getting this hand over, then raking, deception, pressing, striking, now another strike, chamber, side kick. Okay. You might feel a little exposed when you're here against that hand. I was going to say before, is it could be he did a back fist with that hand, and I'm here, and there's nothing to worry about. It's a concept of learning how to protect your body with your forearms. So once again, righty, in, here, raking, punching, side kick. Let me do it lefty, but right from the same side. Move up this a little bit, Jim. Coming in slow. See how I turn. Now watch this hand here as it comes in. Protecting myself. Raking, or he goes to block this, and I hit him. Or I press his hand against him. There's so many choices. I'm going up to the ribs. Very easily well could have been the knee. Some other variations that you might be shown is the guy comes in. This hand got there first. That might happen because he didn't punch where. He didn't punch low. He punched up higher. Now this arm has the ability to come up and snap. And then go that way. He might be turning and punching. You might be getting in here. This hand might have gotten here first. And you're coming in and you're snapping there. And you can go into something different. You can come in and, you know, and go into a throw technique. 
It really doesn't matter. Or you get a finished five combination. You could be in here, he throws this hand in, and they use that as a strike to the jaw. So we call that wounded tiger concept. There's so many possibilities. Let's do five combination in its entirety, Jim. Coming in, turning, protecting. You can have a chicken wrist or a fist. Just don't have your fingers dangling out that way. Rake. Back to knuckle punch. Huh. And always look around. I'm an advocate of always trying to get as much look as you can. Thank you, Jim. Now this combination four and five. Practice them well, practice them often. I'd like to introduce you to the one kata. It is the uh, form that is taught in the orange belt section of our system. Let's get started with it. But please remember, you must do these moves on bags, eventually on board breaking, against a partner with sparring gear, and just maybe working each section, or each concept that you can come up with, or that the instructor showed you some application, and do it 10 times each. If you just do it in the air like a dance, that's all you have. Let's get started with number one kata. I'll do it facing you, with a lot of explanation, and then away. Do not try to learn the whole form from the tape should be supplemental to what your instructor is giving you. Bow like the other forms. There's the crossing fist. Left front fall kick. Land. Notice how my weight lands right there with a front to knuckle punch. Front kick. It's a front ball kick to the stomach. Soloplex area to be more correct. Front two knuckle. Not all over the place. Get that right out there. Foot comes underneath the shoulder. X block, down block, front two knuckle punch down to the pubic bone area. Come around, scanning and looking everywhere. Your hands are still here. X block, seizing, yanking, throwing there, or possibly some other things I'll show later. Blocking, notice that from four combination. Stepping in, notice that from the orange belt Kempo. Blocking, notice that from combination five. Poke, there's the dropping palm block. Palm strike, front ball kick, turn, back to knuckle, set, side kick, set, side kick, end up. Let's try it backwards. From position, I'll walk right through it. There's no need to do your forms fast. It's not a race. In fact, something I like do to advanced students is have them do one kata and finish in no earlier than a minute and a half or two minutes to go extremely slow so they can focus on some of the application that I'm going to work on with Jim. Thank you, Jim. It's the beginning, you know, the crossing fist. That's purely more just symbolic in the form started. Kicking the guy in the groin or the stomach causes something to come down. Striking forward. My preference is in here and it wham right to there. But what's important as you kick, as your weight lands, right, there you deliver the punch. Not that you're kicking and landing and your punch got out before you land, or you kick, you land, and your punch comes out. Should be movement. Same thing on the other side. Kick with movement. It's the hips ha! that does the work. From here, now I'm turning. I sense somebody coming. I look over. I X block. He comes low with something. I down block, and I punch. Or it could be an X block coming here, a body punch, and then punching here. Or he could be coming to try to grab me. I go right to his neck. Very, very dangerous thing to do. You're responsible in the martial arts. You have to control what you're doing. Hammer to the ribs, strike to the groin. And that's interesting. Here it was sh sh strike, strike, strike. Before, 
it was block, he comes in with something else, block here. What's the right thing to be thinking about? There's no right thing, just make your body follow the motions. From there, you're coming around, you're looking, and a person is delivering a kicking motion towards your groin. You're blocking it. Now you're not there already, and he's kicking you, and you're blocking it. You're kind of, maybe you're standing here, and all of a sudden you sense somebody coming, and you drop. Boom, you're moving into him. You have his leg. You got his leg, watch my leg, how it comes to my other leg. Don't lift higher than your armpit height. Then you throw it across his body. That's, a lot of people find it hard when you've got their foot to control themselves, because when you're here like this, you're stepping towards them. That's hard, right, Jim? And they're throwing it that way. Martial arts are pretty good at catching their balance that way. So you could also be, give me the other foot for a second. Here, you'll be coming in this way and throwing it that way. Either way, you'll play around with it in the class. Do it on a partner, five times this way, five times that way. Shorter partners, taller partners, heavier partners, lighter partners. Got that on one breath there. And play around with it. So we're going to be catching a foot. Boom. Don't catch it. Fingers open. You block. And you're catching it here. And you can be here. You can even be coming back and throwing it one more time. This section, you're just on guard. He throws a punch, a kick, or something, and you're here. It could have been a spinning back fist. I'm there. It could have been a high kick. I'm there. It doesn't make a difference. My next motion, I could be blocking something in here or pressing his body and poking him. Or I could have been here. This motion that was the press before controls the shoulder. This arm shoots underneath. I buckle his weight and I help initiate a throw. Let me show that to you again. Come on up, Jim. Let's do it on this side. Over here. He, I'm here like this. He punches. Boom. I'm in here and I start a throwing move. Maybe I just whip him and never let his body stop. If I did the poke to him, I could be blocking a hand strike and then palming back and front kicking in the next section. He could be side kicking me and I could be blocking down. Then coming back, ooh, and then coming in. The only thing you don't really want to block with the downward palm, throw an easy snap kick. It's not meant to block a snap kick straight down. If it's, if it's a front ball kick or snap kick, if it's a front snap kick, you can block it by like sneaking off to the sides. If it's a front ball kick, same thing. You don't want to come into you. But side kick, you can even use either hand. It works very good that way. So for me, I could have been poking this opponent. He comes in with something, blocking, palming, boom. Because then I palm him, he'd be moving away from me, and I'd be front kicking him. Or, I could be in here, have just flipped my partner here and then palmed him and then front kicked him. Hope I'm not confusing with all these things. Make sure you have the form before you get into all these different ideas. Because sometimes what you're thinking about in one part will definitely have to affect what you're thinking about in the next part. Smear, so now you block, you palm, boom. So, what would you think if you saw me do this? And kicked low. Since the time's got a weak front kick and you only can kick low, he's not stretching. You know, I can kick high, boom, or low. It's what I'm thinking about. As I say in the Japanese martial arts, the bunkai, what's the concept? What am I thinking about? Now from here, the next move is he's right over here, start over there. He throws a punch, I block, and I do a back two knuckle. Some people say, oh, I like to punch with the other hand. In Kempo, we try to learn to strike from where our hand is. So later on when you're fighting, you don't have to wind up and help you with a lot of your in-close fighting ability. So from here, you just turn, block, and punch. Notice when I turn, I block my whole entire body. That's very important. You're whipping around. Somebody says, Tom, watch out. Whoo, bang, right in there. The next movement, I'm standing here using my peripheral vision. This works perfect. I can see you right there a little bit, and I can see him a little bit. I'm not together too much. I'm in a pine tree. He comes in, wham, with a quick side kick. This could have been deception, it could have been a block, or it could have been a strike. What you're thinking about will definitely affect your kick. Then on the other side, I'm here, there, 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 I had a block, then I kicked. Or he's very close, I hit him, and then I kicked. It is traditionally taught as this is a mechanism to get him to lift up his arm, so you're blocking me more. And then I hit him. 
and the full-blown thing you just get the whole body wham right in and then that would be the end of the form thank you Jim I'm gonna do the form once I don't want you to think about what I was doing and see if you can visualize what I'm visualizing as in my motions I'll do it slow so you can see what we're talking about ha! Practice one, Carter. Practice well, but once again, do it on the bags, do it on bodies, do it on practicing board striking to get the full uh, knowledge that's there. Next, let's get right into the front grab techniques or the jujitsu's. Except Jim, come on out. You might have gotten into some front grabs already. Remember, white belt was about people grabbing you from the wrist in this area. Yellow belt was about this. We're not saying that that's the only way you're going to get grabbed at those ranks, but we're just trying to focus on some knowledge. Our system is proven for success. It's step by step. So for me, somebody's grabbing you in the front. Now, a lot of people, get right in there good. Like, actually, more. we can do lapels too. Let's do front choke first. A lot of people show this maneuver. You know, I have a student who's a little over 300 pounds, and when he grabs me, with all my strength and all my knowledge, when I buck out like this, I can get a little bit of a bucking of his elbow, just enough to strike. You know, if I weighed a little less and wasn't as strong, I might not be able to pull it off. So it's a possibility. The best time to do this is as he's coming to grab you. Yeah, now you got that one-tenth of a second before his strength keeps winning, and then you strike, and then you go, and you do your maneuvers. So. That's not a bad move. From here, a simple thing to think about, taking a keychain or your fingers, Jim's gonna be choking me. My face is gonna get red. I'm gonna cough probably, cheer a little bit. Go. You shouldn't practice too much. Keep going to my voice. There you go. Keep going. <coughs> Keep going. <coughs> now, I don't want to advise you to practice that, but if you only know what I did, and you can tell Jim was really choking me, is I pressed in here. If you're on the floor, that could work quite well as a quick jabbing motion. You want to do it slow because then somebody can grab your arm when you're on the floor, but quick move like that. Um, many times when I start out my front kick moves, I do a quick stun shot, a quick kicking motion or something. The move I'd like to show you will help you develop many moves of your own. Kicking with a front kick, side kick, a stun shot. Reach, not just a little bit, reach for the stars. Get that arm really high. Remember, you just stunned them. Jim's going to feel something weird happening in his arm. What's happening there, Jim? It's twisting. It's twisting, and then I drop. Then I elbow. Look at my right foot. I move it a little bit. Then I turn. Watch it again directly from behind the camera, right here. Quick stun shot, quick stun shot, quick stun shot, whatever it is. Reach. Get in position and drop. These hands come just protecting here. You got some very interesting chin art techniques happening onto his wrist if he holds on very tight. You'll get a sense of that when you get practicing. Elbow, and then watch my waist. You want to add something? Boom! You can spinning hook, kick him right across the back of the head. Please be careful when you're working with your partners. Hitting. You letting your wrist there, Jim? Yep. That's what I was talking about in there. Elbowing, palming, before I did a spin kick, that's how you do a psyche. Doesn't matter what you end with. It's a good move, practicing it. Let me do it in the air once, Jim, for them. Hitting here, up, huh. boom. Another good one to work on. Getting grabbed in here. We're gonna kind of do the same concept here. Stun shot, stun kick, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Come in this way. When I say it doesn't matter what you're doing, it matters that when you get grabbed, you do something quick. I wrote a uh, magazine article uh, quite a few years ago on the subject of 
sharpening your most lethal weapon, which is your mind. And a lot of people have great techniques, but they let themselves get grabbed. And then they go, okay, the move I'm going to be doing is this. That's not good. What you should do, the second the person grabs you around the throat or the chest, is move. Not even allowing your brain to entertain the thought for one second that it's a right for somebody to grab me. If you grab me, wham! So in class, when you're practicing a move, and he goes to front choke you, now what's that move I wanted to do? How did Sensei Tom say it went? It went this way and that way? Oh, I don't remember. Let me think about that. Oh, yeah, I got it. I'm making a joke about it, but you shouldn't be practicing like that. Have it thought in your head what you're going to do. Then he grabs you. Wham! And you start. And at a minimum, if you make a mistake, at least get the first strike or two in. Same thing if Jim was punching in for me. Let's say I forgot combination six. Uh, punch with me again. Ah, six, six, six. Punch again. Ah, oh, wait, do it again. No, while you're thinking, ah, uh, six, ah, punch, ah, uh, six. You know, I'm, I'm still thinking, and then I remember it, you know, then I do it. Okay, he gets grabs me. Stun okay. shot, stun shot. Reach, get inside his arm like this, come in behind, flip him. Now, if you want to follow up, you can follow up. I'm a firm advocate of pinning the face to the side so you cannot see what's going on and striking. From here, let's do it from this side so they can see Jim. You grab me, and something you got to practice with your partner when you get grabbed, there's forward motion, there's backward motion, there's side to side motion. So you do not have to remember for belt promotions or for uh, you know, a tournament like that, the set form of one of our movements of this nature, if you're doing a self-defense division because we're out in the street, because we want you to be able to react and make up your own movements. Kicking, stunning. Coming over. Notice if my main move is with my right hand, I usually kick and stun with the other side. We'll get that over that in the spine, talking about the lateral. Come in, controlling. Looks a lot like one kata, doesn't it? Notice, Jim, you tell me what's going on with your leg over here, you feel that? Yeah, can get a sweep. Feel like it's sweet. It's getting locked a little bit. And then just bring him over. Oh, yeah. Boom. If I wanted to drop down and lock him out, stomp on him, whatever. It's not a bad thing sometimes. Just to hit him and come in and throw him in that direction. And I go what? In that direction. If you notice as he was falling, got a little palm shot. Thank you, Jim. You can make up probably a dozen techniques of what was just there. There's many more. I don't want to inundate you with too many techniques. I'd rather have you work concepts which you already have in your head. Maybe you studied somewhere before. Maybe an instructor gave you some extra concepts. Take what's in your head right now. Take what I just said and learn from it and adapt and grow with it. Next, I'd like to work on some reactionary techniques, such as the no mind concept, and maybe we'll get into some other sparring techniques. Let's have Jim come on out. Now remember, at white belt, he threw that jab at us, we blocked it. Yellow belt, we blocked it, and we punched once. Okay, so what we're going to do it orange. We're going to block it, whatever he throws, boom, punch once, punch twice. Or he does whatever he's doing, block it, and hit and knee. It doesn't really matter. Okay, if Jim does a spinning move on me, I'm here like this, I can palm, and that could be the move right there, and he falls down. So my second move was a kick, which was a sweep. It doesn't really matter. Jim can, doesn't have to take me down. He blocks what I throw at him, block, and he does two quick strikes, bang, bang. He blocks what I throw at him, boom, boom, boom. Okay, it doesn't really matter what he does. Boom. He likes sweeping. From here, you know, he could also come at me. When you do the no mind drill, it doesn't always have to be punches. He can come try to grab me. Block, wham, bam. It do, and that was two punches. I don't know if you noticed, it was one, two. Just being in a really good position. He could be uh, kicking at me, blocking, and wham, and it could be distance. Doesn't always have to be close. That could be the movement right there. And that leads us right into the sparring, which I mentioned before about the lateral and diagonal. When people are grabbing me, a lot of times I hit on one side, because my move is coming in the diagonal. I'm hitting him here, and my move is coming in from over here. A lot of times when I'm sparring at a distance with somebody, I use, a lot of times people will hit to this side of his body and this side of his body, and it works. And that's the high-low stuff we talked about earlier. In fact, we did it in both of the videos. 
But what I like to work on is lateral things where you hit this side of his body, he blocks it, and then go for the far side. His thoughts are over here. This side of my body is under attack. And you go to that side. So you can see it over here. I'm going on this side and there. Also, I got a little diagonal. So I'm going high here, low there. Okay, and you're going to write in the belt not too. Boom. But try it over here because your thoughts are not over here. Your thoughts are where, Jim? Yeah. With sparring, your thoughts are over there. Okay? You know, you just move around. It doesn't matter. You can just practice it, you know, going back and forth with your partner. He does it to me. Boom. And he's in here. He kicks. Boom. Bam. You know what I'm saying? Just think about working the lateral. Another way to work the lateral, let's put this foot forward right here, is you hit this side and then this hand comes under, through, hits this side, then that side. And this is a perfect example of what we were talking about before. Let me show you how you get into that. You spar, you fake a kick, or you stun him, you hit here. Now that's the same side, but now you're going to slip and go lateral to the exact opposite side of his body with a full complete hooking motion. This hand is here, could be blocking or striking. Then I hit him, now I'm over here, I'm going to come diagonal to there. What I'm really talking about when I'm talking about lateral and diagonal, when your instructor's talking about, is getting into actually aiming, not just, oh, I kicked him, wow, I scored, to actually start aiming, to start aiming at points, going this way, going that way. There's so many variations of this, it's incredible. By this time at Orangeville, hopefully you'll have on all the gear. There'll be headgear, there'll be hand pads, uh, mouthpiece, groin protection, Strongly suggested a rib guard, foot pads, and a shin pad. And elbow knee pads aren't bad either. The more gear you and your partner have on, the more assertive and the more close you can get. You don't have to say sorry when your movements. I didn't put the gear on as yet because I don't want you to be watching, getting all impressed with the contact that we're doing. I like to get you involved and getting in your brain to thinking about the movements we're doing. So do it back and forth with your partner. You should be doing some freestyle sparring. You should be working a lot of patterns where your partner initiates a kick and you work off of it. Or you initiate a movement and he works off of that. Get it down, the foundation. When a big tree gets up nice in its uh, mature age, it gets very tall. But the roots are what keeps it. When the big hurricane winds come by, the roots keep it in. Well, as a martial artist, you have all these advanced moves. But your roots, your stretching, your breathing, your basic stance, your basic kicks and punch, your basic blocks, your basic concepts, are what keeps you from getting knocked over from the big guy. Awareness drills that are important to get experience with. Not to master them at Orange Belt, but to have experience with them. In fact, everything in our curriculum is about an experience, becoming aware of how your body works, what it's capable of, and more importantly, too, what it's not capable of. Let's get started. Jim, come on out. The crane balance drill. Basically, it's human nature when somebody grabs your shoulder to resist it. The martial arts, the yin and yang that's on many school patches and our own, when you get pulled, is to go with it, not when he pulls you to fight it. See, if I try to hold my balance, I can lose my balance. If he pushes me, I try to hold my balance, I can lose it. If he pushes me, in the order of the philosophy, you are the center of the universe. So the center of the universe is here, he pushes me, so now it's over here. I push Jim, you don't fight it. He pushes my shoulder, you don't fight it. I sneak up behind Jim and I yank his shoulder, he goes with it. It seems easy, you say, well, I understand that. You actually have to experience it and go back and forth with a partner. He pushes me, and I don't resist him. I'm going to lose my balance. He pushes, boom. No, don't do that yet. That's going to come a little later where you do the strikes right off of it. He pushes me, I'm talking to you, and I'm there. If he pushed me that hard and I tried to hold my balance, I can lose my balance. You only can lose your balance if you try to maintain it as a set thing. So for me, I push Jim, boom. I push him, boom. I pull him, boom. Whatever it is, okay? Another thing to work on from the set monkeys to squat down is close your eyes and I pull him back and he slaps out. Maybe I push him sideways, he slaps, he rolls. It doesn't really matter what Jim does to me. I'm like this, he pushes me forward, I slap out. I'm back here like this, 
I'm back like that. It doesn't really matter what goes on, but do it with your eyes closed. So I'm here like this, I don't know what he's gonna do. Boom, and I slap and I go. It doesn't really matter what happens. I could go into a roll or not, whichever direction he takes you. I'm here like this. You can do it with your eyes open at first, and they say he yanks me, whatever, do whatever. Boom, then I could go into a roll. It doesn't really matter. Thank you, Jim. The next thing is a defense against thrown objects. As your partner comes in, he might be throwing punches, you do your moves. Your partner might be grabbing up some grass, some sand, throwing something at you. What you do is you turn sideways. You're less of an object, you bend down. You put this in here, close your eyes, put your head here, and lift up your shoulder. Try to cover as much of your body as you can, stay sideways, not completely backwards. And then take steps off at an angle and maybe change your distance. Don't have anybody throw anything at you, let your instructor take some things, maybe some sparring gear and throw it at you. It could be any type of object, it could be water, uh, it could be uh, sand. In reality, it could be somebody throwing corrosive liquid, flammable liquid, or just you don't know what you're throwing. And you just, boom. You do close your eyes. Keep the fist, not open. And then turn and go. That's something you need to work on. Okay. Each time you do these drills, think safety and think experience. The last thing I'd like to talk to you today about is some breathing and also an interesting book called Zen in the Martial Arts by Joe Hines. I'm not going to say a lot about the book. It's a great book. Read it and I think you'll uh, learn a lot from it. It'll open up your eyes to beginning uh, of kind of the mental part of the martial arts. Uh, if you haven't read the other book, Living the Martial Way by Morgan, you'll know what I mean that I'll open up your eyes. If you read Morgan's book that I suggested in the Yellow Belt video, this will then even open up your eyes in slightly different areas. Three-step tension release breathing. I talked about it in the last uh, bell tape, I'll also talk about it now. Same rules apply as beginning. Breathe in through your nose, hold it, out through your mouth. But each time when you breathe in, you scrunch up a different part of your body. Tighten up maybe your toes when you breathe in. Holding it, and then you exhale and you release everything. Going up your entire body. This will give you some things to think about when you're breathing. So you breathe in, you can close your eyes, keep your back straight. You can lie down or kneel or sit like this, semi-lotus. Breathe in. Hold it, then exhale. That time I was tightening my ankles. And you go through each part of your body. You might not be able to tighten up a certain part of your body. That's all right. You eventually get the control part. If I did the whole body, this would take about like anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. So you can work on it on your own. But it'll just give you something to achieve while you're breathing. The three, sec three step breathing. Breathing in for five seconds, holding for five seconds, exhaling for five seconds is important. We did it before, now we're adding a little physical contraction, a different muscle group, all the way up from your toes and all the way through. Keep your back straight, or you can be in this position. Practice it, you can do it in the morning, before or after workout, after uh, maybe at a lunch break, before you go to sleep, whenever you do it, just practice it, get into the mode. Each belt rank will be asking you to do different meditative breathing things so that later on when we get into the advanced Qi Kung parts of the system, you'll be all set. Practice well, keep up the good work.